In this video, we will show you how to replace your upper ball joint on the Chevy Trailblazer. This is part of your front suspension located behind your front wheel. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. Safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so your wheel's off the ground with the suspension hanging. Once you've done that, we'll continue on to removing the center cover, all six of our 19 millimeter lug nuts, and then the wheel. Now that we have the wheel off of there, we have a close look at our axle nut. Use a 36 millimeter to remove the nut and then a hammer and punch to break the axle free from the bearing. Quick inspection. Now let's move along the back side of the knuckle here. You're going to find your flex hose has a bracket holding it to the knuckle. There's two 10 millimeter headed bolts holding this in place. Remove the pair. Now that we have that out of the way, let's pay attention to our ABS wire. That leads all the way over to the frame. Now we don't have to disconnect this electrical connector, but we do want to have a little bit of slack from this area. With that said, we'll use a trim tool or small prying device. We need to separate the mounting areas. We'll just get in between the plastic and just separate it from the control arm there. We'll double check to make sure that mounting point is still in good condition. Make our way down along the frame, same thing. Go ahead and separate that as well. At this point, we have plenty of slack from the ABS wire. We're just going to hang this aside. Be extremely careful with it. We don't want to pinch it or damage it in any way. Now we can start separating the upper ball joint from the control arm. For this, you'll find that you have a pinch bolt that comes through from the front towards the rear. We'll be using two 15 millimeters to remove this. Keep in mind, once you have this out of here, we will be separating the ball joint from the control arm. As this separates, we're going to have to carefully pull it away, but we don't want to put a tug on our axle while doing so. Now we can remove the pinch bolt. It's always a good idea to replace your pinch bolt and hardware. If you're not, you need to at least clean it and give it a thorough inspection. Now we'll use a hammer and chisel and gently separate the control arm right in this area. We only need to move it just enough that the ball joint will slide out. As we continue lifting this up and pulling this away, once again, we're paying close attention to that axle. We don't wanna let this pull forward. We can just go ahead and set it aside one direction or the other. Let's make our way up here, just get this out of there. Now that we have that separated, we can carefully start bringing this outward. You wanna be very careful for the axle though. That's why we broke this free. I'm going to start pressing it through the rear here while I pull this outward. With this pulled down, the next thing we wanna do is pay attention along the top of the knuckle. You'll find that you have a snap ring that holds the ball joint in place. Just gonna use a wire brush, clean up the area a little. The next thing you can do is either use some snap ring pliers or a hammer and punch and remove this clip. Start tapping this off of here. Now we can start pressing out the ball joint. This ball joint will come from the top out through the bottom. With that said, you wanna make sure you have a cup that fits over the ball joint, but not necessarily touching against it. We only wanna to be touching against the knuckle. We'll put that and put it right in place. 
Now we can continue up along the top. To drive this down, there's several different ways we can do so. You can either press directly up against the stud here, we'll use an adapter right on the top, or you can take off the boot, cut the stud, and then just go ahead and drive it down with the press itself, whichever way works best for you. I'll put on my adapter. Install the ball joint tool here. And now we'll start applying pressure, driving the ball joint down and out. There it is, friend. Once you have the original ball joint out of this area, it's important to make sure you clean and inspect it. If it looks like it's damaged in any way, you want to make sure that you either service it or replace the steering knuckle. Now it's time to install our brand new upper ball joint. Go ahead and take this and slide it through the bottom of the knuckle. We'll bring it right up and through. Now at this point, we're going to start pressing the ball joint up into the knuckle. When doing so, it's important to make sure you only press against the outer aspect of the ball joint itself, never against the center because you will cause damage and you're going to have to replace the ball joint again. To do this, it's fairly simple overall. We can just use a cup that has a hole in the bottom and that should fit right over the edge there. Now up along the top, as you remember when we were removing this, we need to have an area for the ball joint to come through. So I have a cup right up along the top there that'll allow the ball joint to come up and through, but only presses against the knuckle. Since that cup has a hole in the top, we'll just be using a flat disc as well. Now we can take this and start putting it in position. The hardest part doing this is just getting everything aligned properly. Obviously this isn't a race, now, as we start driving this into position, we want to be paying attention along the bottom here. We want to make sure that the base of that ball joint hits directly against the bottom of the knuckle all the way around. Now let's have a quick look along the top here, double check to make sure everything's seated, and we'll continue on with our locking clip. All right, let's get this thing installed. As for our snap ring, you will have to use snap ring pliers. Slide it over the top here and put it into the groove. Double check to make sure it's seated. Now we can start swinging this back up into its original position. Align the ball joint with the control arm. Go ahead and tug down on that control arm so we can put in our pinch bolt. Now we can start pressing this thing together. Once you have that pulled through, we'll continue on with our pinch bolt. Start on the mounting nut there. Now let's snug this up and torque it to 30 foot pounds. <laughs> now we can start securing the ABS wire. This will go straight up into the bottom of the control arm. Just go ahead and carefully feel along here. Once you find that slot, you can press it in. Press that in there. Now we'll make our way back here. Same thing. This one's going into the frame of the vehicle. We just have to locate that hole and then press it in. Press that in there. Now we can get this flex hose on here. Now that those are started in, we'll snug them up. Now let's continue on with our 36 millimeter axle nut. 
Start that on by hand and we'll snug it up using a ratchet. You never want to use an air tool on this because we don't want to damage the bearing. Right there's bottomed out. Now we can get this closer to the ground so we can torque it. Now we can torque this to 103 foot pounds. What you'll find is to prevent this from spinning, I used a pry bar coming across the lug studs, being extremely careful not to damage the threading. This comes diagonally down to the ground, holding it in place for me. Now we can install our wheel. Start on all six of your 19 millimeter lug nuts. We'll bottom these out, get the wheel back on the ground, and we can torque these to 100 foot pounds. With the wheel safely on the ground, we'll torque these in a crisscross manner. If you have a center cover, you can put that on now. Have a look along the back side. You'll find that you have a small diagram of a valve stem. This is the valve stem on your wheel. We'll align this area and tap it into place. Okay, friend, we've got our vehicle back together. At this point, take it for a road test, listen for funny noises, and get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.